Hello and welcome. So I'm here today to bring you a general overview of where we're at, where we've been and where we're heading and, and what we can be looking forward to, what we need to hold on to and, and what our role may look like at this time. So I'm Sharon Martin and I am a messenger for Gaia and so these are notes that I've written today actually and I've had a big session with her today and so let me begin. We are at and have been at a choice point. It is really involving on many levels this choice point, the individual, the collective um, and that everything occurs this way, just to remember that everything occurs on the micro and on the macro. So many of us have already made our choice about which trajectory we are heading in and we're very clear on that, those of us who are awake and conscious. But right now is the time for the collective to be making those choices and so we have a role to play in that. So we need to be, in a way, inviting those people who are just awakening to be making choices about their direction, their trajectory, their timeline, their pathway, by asking them to consider do they want to be living in a world that is fear-based or love-based, in a world that is full of limitation and contraction and control, or in a world where it's free, it's expanding, it's enlightening. Do we want to live in a world where we work together to bring about change and, and beauty in our new dimensional space? Or do we want to live in a world that, that heads into a place where we will be continually diminished? in our abilities to think, be conscious, and also in our patterns and ways of life. So do we choose dark or light, love or fear, expansion or contraction? Those are the general questions to be asking ourselves or, or one another. So we are witnessing unprecedented change and we are very much still in this intensity that we began. Well, we began in September. The light shifted in, in the middle of September, about the 18th. It kind of there became this opening, this expansion. And so we've got that going on as well. At the same time, we've got this continued pressure, this continued intensity, this condensing the squeezing and it's it's designed to be bringing us through to completion of purification of release so that we can really be examining who we are who we want to be and become both as um, individual people as family units as communities as countries as a uh, a whole collective of humanity, the species, and as our planet. So we are in this time of dissolution of the old, and that is going to be both scary and exhilarating, because we're moving into the unknown. We're moving into an, a whole series of changes that we need to unpack and co-create and figure out. And we don't do that so much through our heads. We do that leading from our hearts, leading from our intuition, leading from our higher guidance, knowing and cognition. And then we use the brain as tools for the fathoming of that, for the sort of instigation of that, if you like, after we've come up with the the greater parameters around uh, where where we're headed and, and what we want to achieve, how we want to live, how we want to communicate, how we want to be 
in our new dimensional frequencies and we I have to say you know let's be mindful to not get caught up in the details of that we're still in the general energies the feelings the emotions we want to hold and carry in that regard but we are especially going to be looking at the dissolution of systems and structures right throughout and that is going to take on a more visible presence so during this month of October we'll begin to see more dissolution of some of the systems that have stood strongly um, in the midst of of what we have been going through this, if you like, this pandemic. We will be witnessing the examination, analysis, dissolution of aspects of many of our systems and all of them over over time, over the next few years. But, you know, currently, especially government, medical, pharmaceutical, health, um, finance and banking, Many of you may be feeling exhausted. We're going through massive upgrades in our DNA reconnections, if you like. They are being soothed and smoothed and reconnected in our systems and it's taking a lot of energy. On top of that, what is coming through to us for assistance in our ascension is these filaments, these um, flares, these aspects of the sun that are coming in here and they are carrying light codes or light packages or seed packages for our enhancement into our fifth dimensional aspects, bringing in, showing up, catalyzing, asking us to remember from our cells, our gifts, talents, our skills, our higher level, higher consciousness aspects coming in, including our multi-dimensional aspects, kind of dropping down like a, a stack, if you like, coming in as we are rising up it. Um, these aspects of our multi-dimensional selves are coming in to be housed in our bodies. As we are becoming less dense and more light, we are able to house uh, more of that and higher aspects of self, really. Um, we're returning to being able to be putting those things into play in our lives here and in the world. So many of you will begin to notice these aspects awakening and just be with it. Don't try and force these things. Just be in allowance and acceptance of them. Explore them. And um, you can just ask your higher self to show you what you need to know or, or explore or experience or practice at this time. Um, many of you are going to also be going through job changes. We're going to have quite a huge um, shift in the aspects of work, uh, in the way in which we engage in work and in the work that is available. So it's going to be quite a huge change. Um, hard to hard to describe hard to define um, we are we're going to have such a shift in our internal ways of operating in our value systems in our priorities um, as humans and as members of the community so there is a lot coming up in a whole lot of different ways and we will just unravel it it will come in it is all speeding up we will get used to this acceleration of these energies and codes that are coming in and be as Gaia has said often you know getting used to standing on shifting sands um, but we're getting better at it and we certainly have a lot of help and assistance we have a lot um, of a lot of assistance off planet as well as on planet and there are a lot of craft that are around our earth and have been for a number of years to kind of hold space, be observers and to gift us assistance in many different ways. Um, and so they will, you know, they will 
arrive on our planet but only at a time when when we are ready for it so don't get caught up Gaia has said that that a few years ago she said to me that there is likely to be some kind of um, fake or false event around there's this um, invasion from non-earth beings but that will not be happening what will happen is that we will get assistance and that will happen when we are ready to deal with that to be at peace with that in our hearts it won't come before then so I want to talk about the information that's come through about these um, injections that are being given um, Guy did say to me quite a while ago but she asked me to allow some process to unfold so I just want to tell you some of the things that I know some of this is kind of has come through a series of conversations and my own intuition and uh, around what I see and feel um, so you take it or leave it uh, but but what I want to tell you is that what I get around all of the information around the contents of this is that it's a bit of a mashup it's a bit of a mix up there's not any consistency in each of the brands and within each of the brands it's there's a deliberate intentional mix up and so there's that aspect of it and, and my understanding of that is that it's so that there are inconsistent outcomes, inconsistent results so it's more challenging uh, to challenge it really to, um, to perhaps make judgments around what it is or what it isn't and then on top of that also I believe that there has been divine intervention to, to soften the effects or reduce the effects um, Gaia says that there will be an ameliorating effect of an energy wave that will come through uh, that will will undo much of the damage that is done. Um, so that's an energy wave and um, that part of this whole aspect has been this opportunity for internal shifts um, for considerations and decisions so asking us to really become more attuned more intuitive as as individuals here on the planet and and so to go through those processes of decision making around all of this Um, the most important thing for all of us no matter where you are on your awakening journey is to hold your vibration um, to lift your vibration as much as you can to keep your vibration high you focus on what is good what is amazing what is lovely and beautiful and that brings you joy in your heart and peace and ease and love and an upliftment all of those things that are encouraging and inspiring in your life you look to those things you be deliberate and intentional about looking for those things that's how you lift your well-being that's how you lift your energy that's how you lift your vibration and hence your frequency and these are all of the things that you know we're being asked to be mindful about at this time and if you are already awake and aware and conscious then your task is to hold that vibration as high as you can and to hold the constancy of light to be shining light to be your own radiant light as that helps to hold the vibrational frequency across the planet and therefore for humanity and that's the biggest assistance that we can give at the moment um, to start to envisage our new earth um, and not so much how it will look but the feelings that you will have when you are there so again you go to your heart you go to feeling deeply in love in love with yourself in love with life in love with the people around you in love with our environment in love with our earth 
and it's that vibration that we want to be bringing in more and more. Um, I actually released a meditation about that a couple of days ago, or maybe, yeah, I don't know, a couple of days ago. So have a look, that's, I think it says Love Pulse Meditation. Um, right now, it's about coming into and 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 encouraging more more people to come into feelings of peace of ease of calmness so it's very challenging for people to go from fear to love in one bit but we just incrementally move our way up the scale and that's what we encourage others to do and when we can be holding space for that that's a useful a very useful place to sit um yeah, this idea that it's very challenging to do this 180 turn, you know, if you are on a ship, it turns incrementally in the port, and if you are a truck, you don't do a, a big U-turn on the motorway. It's, it's an incremental, gradual shift so that all the axles line up and don't cross over and lose their way. Uh, and that's really what we need to do energetically as well. So we, we shift from, you know, from rage to anger, we shift from anger to less anger, we shift into neutrality, into ease, into comfort, into acceptance, into allowance, into neutrality, and then we move up from there into love and joy and laughter and unconditional love, so all of those very a light high frequency energies and and that's how we shift ourselves one little bit at a time um going to bed having a sleep that's a great reset if you're peeved with what's going on or if you feel an overwhelm you know that's another another way that you can shift it one thing that is important for all of us to do is to let go of story let go of your personal story of your family stories of your community stories, of the stories of what you're making up about what's going on, uh, remembering that energy flows where focus goes. So where are you putting your energy? Where are you placing your focus? Because in a way, where you place your focus is where you are taking yourself. So just remember that. Is that where I want to be? Is that where I want to end up? Um, be very mindful of that at this time. We're in this very quick turnaround for manifestation. So where we place our energy and our focus, that's where we will end up. So please come into alignment with yourself. You know, be thinking about what do I want to be? How do I want to be? How do I want to be feeling? Um, all of those emotional aspects, that's where you place your focus. And when we all do that, when we're all holding ourselves in that positive energy, it does make a difference, it really does. Um, we are in our fifth dimensional energy now, and the beautiful analogy that Gaia gives for it is this idea that we're in a, a fifth dimensional energy that's, that's a glass full of water with a few drops of lemon juice in it. That's our fifth dimensional energy. And now our job is to add more lemon juice to it so it becomes more concentrated. More concentrated fifth dimensional energy and frequency. So that's kind of the place that we're in. She says this program, the injection program, will be concluded shortly. Uh, it will be ceased. It will be taken out of operation. Uh, there will be a world court order and decree that will come down um, likely this month. And that will begin the rollout and will completely be ceased by Christmas everywhere, is what she says. I want to speak now about October energies. October will be intense. And the first half of October is going to feel very much like a continuation of September. This idea of our watching off some closing of mini cycles and of, of truth arising and so we are going to see more of that we are actually going to kind of be demanding more of that um, we will continue to see this truth arising and begin to see in a more physical tangible sense the collapse of many of our systems 
um, they'll be clearly revealed as dysfunctional and operating uh, with hidden objectives that are not for our highest good. Uh, the penny will drop for many, is what Gaia said. Uh, the truth will dawn for many. So here we are speaking of the collective, of course. A large group, Gaia said, about 60%. We're, we are looking at 60% of our world population beginning to awaken, beginning to have this kind of um, realisation of, of seeing through the veils. She says that many are going to have this experience of feeling rather dazed and confused. It will bring them into overwhelm. Um, and be outside of their ability to comprehend. This is where cognitive dissonance comes in. And honestly, this has just been her big thing the whole time that all of this has been going on. That's been the thing she's spoken to me about. You know, what are we going to do about cognitive dissonance? It's going to be such a big factor here. And so this is where we are coming to now. So those of you who are awake and aware, be in the understanding and mindfulness of this is that this is like trying to um well just think about the things that you've come across on your awakening journey which initially you kind of rejected you put it over there because it was too big too weird too wobbly that is what this big collective group is is going to be faced with and so we need to be their supporters not their yeah, not really their teachers. We can be available to be their teachers, but we need to be their supporters. We need to be their compassionate buddies who sit beside them and go, yeah, yeah, what do you think about that? What do you reckon? What have you found out? Yeah, yeah, it's confrontational, isn't it? Yes. Well, what, what else do you want to find out about that? And just encourage them, you know, be their study buddy. <laughs> so they are going to have um, just be confronted with a whole lot of concepts that are outside their ability to comprehend. Just as we have had those experiences, a huge upswelling of cognitive dissonance, which will make itself apparent in a few ways, Gaia says. There'll be confusion, this shutdown, um, with an effect much like a bit of a mental breakdown, like refusing to look. Um, we may um, watch them experience anger. Um, they may have some rage about the lies and the deceptions. Uh, they may turn that inwards on self, so be aware of that. They may blame themselves. It may raise questions for them, like how could I have been so blind, so stupid, so ignorant, so arrogant, so please be compassionate with them about that. You know, that could easily have been you, it could easily have been me. We really we really must be, be that compassionate person who sits with them around it. Um, that this may create a sense of collapse, of despair and disillusionment and in many ways this will be an exceptionally challenging time for each of us. Those who are awake and aware, Gaia says, please get prepared for this. It will be this time when our individualized daily practices of prayer, intention, light holding meditations, sending beautiful loving energies, compassion and softness will play a major role to support this collective group. And then as they move out of this, they will seek understanding. Do not rush them. Hold them like a loved child who has had their first friendship break up. No judgment. Just love and empathy and compassion. They will then 
gain strength and momentum and honestly as I'm speaking that I'm just feeling it all the way through my heart and through my solar plexus and we will rebuild we will rebuild sorry um, we'll rebuild with new constructs and new new technologies um, also there's a, going to be a slightly larger solar event coming over the next um, probably well Gaia indicated really maybe by the likely to be by the 10th of October um, this, it's, you know we've had ongoing ones we've received over the past few months and this is uh, like an, another ascension leg up or step up and as Gaia has said um, for the past few years we're continually in ascension so in these ascending spirals that enable cleansing and clearing and then uh, catalyzing increasing in our light quotient enabling us to come into higher dimensional frequencies and light and the corresponding talents and um, qualities that come with that um, that we are in movement towards, you know, more reconnection, of course, of DNA stranding as we're heading back to, to being reconnected in our 12 strands of DNA. That this is a continual increase of old densities leaving and of speed, light and consciousness coming in. It's ongoing, incremental, with an occasional step up. That's our process now. So then we can look forward to another big opening on the 11th of November. Um, we shifted into a new up-leveling of light and energy around the 18th of September. In mid-October we will experience another significant change around the 15th or 16th. Now this shows up uh, differently. It shows up as a lot of information from um, coming from the outer galaxies. And it will be like a reignition of time and space that it will bring us um, a different way of viewing, of perceiving that as, uh, as we have currently on the earth. That this information, this is information that has been withheld from us um, until it would not be abused. Oh, on that I should say that you know much of the darkness, certainly the 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 really deep dark satanic darkness, has been taken off planet. Um, we really are in this. Well, you know the game's over. We've we've won. The light has won, if you like. Um, it, there's so many different ways to to kind of look at that, but. Uh, we're in, we're in the, yeah, we can't, yeah, <laughs> actually, we're waiting for all the spectators to realise that and to, um, to come down and into balance so that we can then begin the clean up. We're kind of in that. Um, and there's different things happening on different layers. Um... Let me see, I got lost here. Um, yeah, this is interesting. So this information that's being withheld is going to come in. Um, many inventors and holders of future technologies and holders um, of, of kind of futuristic designs and templates of equipment and tools they will receive the missing components, the elusive bits of information that allow completion of their inventions. Um, also, this energy holds a catalyst ingredient as a frequency that's shown to me like the ignition button um, or the ignition switch in a car. Um, it has that effect on the masses like the drip or the drop that overflows the cup um, the drop of nectar that excites the bees uh, that it holds a reality that delivers 
like a yeah like when I feel into it it's a very exciting energy um what else um it seems like a lot anyway but I wanted to just tell you about how in my work um, I get shown some quite cool inventions when I'm in the Akash and doing work with my clients but one of the one of the things that I saw uh, once in our new earth was this invention it's like a oh you know the snow globes that you shake at Christmas and there's bits of white glitter in them so it's kind of like a giant version of that and it's this interactive device that's a, this like a sphere or a semi-sphere that sits I saw it sitting um, in the center of a table and a family was sitting around it and they were having a conversation about what they wanted their new house to look like their new space to look like and this device was building a um, a three-dimensional holographic image inside this sphere that was reflecting um, the desires and merging them and, and moving them around and and you know I overheard conversations about it and I overheard conversations about well what would you like for your bedroom and then all of a sudden it was like a zoom into an aspect of the hologram and then this little girl was saying well you know I want these sorts of colors and and it was that kind of interactive um, convention um, so anyway um, I thought I'd just throw that in there because that's quite exciting uh, I feel a, I feel like this has been a little bit all over the place and I'm, I'm sorry for that but there's just there's just been so much and uh, just be in the excitement of looking for where you want to be headed and in holding space for what's going on and in the knowledge that we really are in the midst of this undoing, this dissolving of these systems and structures that have never served us. They never have. And so now we're going to be watching these dissolve and, and look to bringing in ways that serve, serve humanity to, to be their beautiful, shining, radiant, amazing beings. We're undoing hundreds of years of intrusion and infiltration of um, all sorts of programming and, um, and limiting ideas so anyway I'm going to leave I'm going to leave this all here and um, I will I will see you again soon um, it is it is starting to feel exciting can, can you feel that uh, also, um, yeah, let's be mindful. <laughs> let's be mindful of really holding space for one another and of being aware that many people are in huge overwhelm and uh, that, that we are in this exciting midst of change. So, so much love to you from my heart and from the heart of Gaia. And I will speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe. I also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions in energy healing and Akashic readings. And for those of you seeking clarity of life, purpose and direction, the instructions to book a session are below infinite blessings and much love to you.